at the end of the day, after all have been said, amen, after the dust would have settled, I just want to be right, amen. And we hope and pray that that is your sentiments as well, amen, that you just want to be right, amen. If there was a time that we need to be right, that time certainly is now, amen. For Jesus is coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle, or if you would, he's coming back for a church that is right, not getting right, but is right, amen, is right in these last and evil days. We greet you, amen, today, amen, from the Greater Wall Town United Holy Church. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the name above all names, amen. We greet you in the name of him that was 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 slain, but he rose again on the third day. We greet you in the majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The one, amen, who holds our future in his hands. Amen. At this time, we certainly want to give honor as well to ministry, to all of our ministers. Amen. We honor you today. Amen. And thank you, especially to those who took part Amen. In our service uh, on today. Amen. We certainly give honor to uh, Mother Hannah, to Mother Russell, and also to our deacons and our trustees. Amen. To all of you of the household of faith. And last but not least, amen. We give honor to First Lady Moore, and we thank God for her. Amen. And we give honor to this great sound technician team that is enabling us, amen, to air and broadcast from this, your Greater Wall Town location, 706 Bellevue Avenue, amen. I hope that I can say some things today that would help us all. I just want to speak to you very briefly from out of the word of the Lord, amen, on this morning. Our scripture this morning will be coming from uh, Acts, the second chapter, uh, verses 42 through 47 in the King James Version. Uh, the book of Acts, the second chapter, verses. a card in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this day of service. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity that you have granted unto us of standing before these, your precious people, to declare your unadulterated word. 
We pray, Father, that you would send a fresh anointing that would make preaching easy. And we pray, Father, that you would send a word that your people be edified and that the devil be crucified. And may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart may it be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. I want to talk to you today from the subject, from the following subject, a focus church, a focus church, a focus church. The word focus means the center of interest, or if you would, activity. It is the state of quality or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. In other words, it is the central point. It is the point of attention. In changing times, my brothers and my sisters, as we are seeing before us now, in changing time, the question becomes, how does the church stay focused? In light of the COVID-19, in light of coronavirus, all the things that are going on and all the things that are happening in our society. The 13 million people that are unemployed, the, uh, the many businesses that have closed their doors, and the many also financial institutions that are struggling and the many families that are struggling in light of this pandemic and also this pandemonium that we see ourselves in. In other words, what I'm trying to say to you that, and that is this, Sister Tyler, that uh, because of the things that are happening currently, it is easy for us to get distracted and to lose our focus. It is, it, it is, it is, it is typical, or if you would, it is so easy for us, amen, to forget about, amen, our central point, to forget about our center of interest, uh, forget about why is it that uh, we as a church even exist. And so in changing times, the question is, how does the church stay focused? Uh, the church, because the church has remained strong throughout all the centuries, because it is founded on faith in Jesus Christ. It has had one perpetual goal, and that perpetual goal is that is to evangelize the world saving the lost and preserving the saints in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This church, the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, not this building, uh, not, not, not Greater Walltown, not the building, not the denomination, not the Protestants, not the uh, Episcopalians, not the Church of God in Christ, Come on, somebody, uh, not the Methodists, amen. This church, amen, the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this church has been laboring to witness for Christ for many years. This church, amen, the church that Jesus spoke to Peter about when he told him, amen, that he, that upon this rock will he build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. It has been this church, the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been a witness for Christ 
for generations, all thirsty to hear the word of God, it has been, the church has been a voice for Christ, for all who would hear the gospel message. And after successfully serving God as a witness and being a beacon of hope, uh, the church, uh, the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it remains positioned to bring a word of hope in the midst of this pandemic and pandemonium time. The challenges are the same as they were when, when this church was founded. And we must focus on building the kingdom of God and adding to it and expanding it and preserving it through the power of God. Yes, we are working against a virus, an unseen enemy. Yes, we find ourselves dealing with social injustice and social unrest and racial, come on somebody, racial disparity amen in our society but even though we find ourselves having to deal with that it does not give us amen it does not give us an exemption amen to deter or if you would amen it doesn't give us any kind of exemption amen to stray away from our focus amen our focus must continue to be on building the kingdom of god Amen. And adding to it and expanding it and preserving it through the power of God. For the word says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. There are many changes again in our world today that can easily distract the church. But the church must remain focused. When you look at a neighbor, it's a neighbor a focused church. Amen. There is a growing demand for the mission of the church uh, to switch from Christ and him crucified. You know, the thing of uh, the message of prosperity. Amen. Wherein some have fallen victim to, amen, to the, to the teaching or doctrine of prosperity and have vacated or strayed away, amen, from Christ and him crucified. Uh, but the church must remain focused. There's a desire to define the nature of our relationship with God from uniting with the church to serve God to uniting with the church for God to serve us. Amen. We're not to serve. Amen. God is not to serve us, but we are to serve our God. Have I got a witness in here? Uh, but the church, my brothers and my sisters, we must remain focused. When you look at our neighbors and neighbor, we must remain focused. Amen. With advances in communications, there are thousands of distractions. Uh, you know that where they are, cell phones and text messaging and instant messages and email and the World Wide Web. And for some, these distractions have become so intense that they have begun to neglect the main mission of believers. Amen. Thank God that we have technology and we're using it to promote and advance the kingdom of God. And even though we're not able to come together physically, amen, we're able to come together, come on somebody, spiritually and use technology for the purpose of helping us, amen, to remain focused on building the kingdom of God of God. You see, you got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, it's not about you, and it's certainly not about me, but it's about Jesus, and it's about him crucified. Have I got a witness in here? Amen. And so to do that, we can't remain in the past. Amen. One of the things that this uh, Deacon King, this coronavirus, and this time has, has revealed to us it has revealed to us that we have some deficiencies. We have some areas that we need to step up our game, so to speak. 
amen, because uh, we, we, we're not able to come together physically, so we have to take advantage of the advancement of technology and use that, amen, in our favor and not use that, obviously, in a way of getting distracted. And so we must not be distracted or dissuaded away from the cause of Christ. We must continue, amen, in this word, in his word and pray and fellowship together. And not only so, but we must help those in need and lift up Christ, amen, lift Christ up continuously. For he said in his word, if I be lifted up, oh, come on somebody, I feel something here. He said, I'll draw all men unto me. And so my brothers and my sisters, we must lift the Savior up, amen, throughout eternity. Amen. And so our text today, my brothers and my sisters, it gives us a clear picture, a clear picture of a focused church, a clear picture of a focused church in changing times. In Acts, the second chapter, the church was in its infant stage, amen, surrounded by a world that changed frequently as the Roman Empire had expired or expanded. The church was exposed to the influence of Greek literature, a man, art, and the Roman concept of government called democratic republic. There were different races in Jerusalem from all over the world. It was a large bouquet of cultures and creeds and religions. And it would have been easy for the church to lose its, its focus, uh, but it employed four twos. It employed four twos, and, and these four twos is what I want to share with you. And these twos were employed for the purpose of, of, of the church staying focused on the kingdom of God, amen, as we see in Acts 2, 42 through 47. Uh, the Bible says that the early church, oh, come on somebody, they remain, uh, they remain steadfast in their doctrine. Amen. They remained steadfast in their doctrine, uh, number one. And then number two, they fellowship frequently. Amen. And then uh, they also helped each other. And then they also worship God. Amen. Passionately. And so my brothers and sisters using these four twos uh, for church, for the church, of Acts 2 remain focused and, 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 and committed to the cause of Christ. And if we use these tools, amen, we can find ourselves staying, amen, focused and not getting distracted and not straying away from what God called us as a church, amen, to do. Uh, we can use the example of the church in Acts Amen. As our God for staying focused today. Amen. The Bible says they remain, number one, they remain steadfast in the doctrine. What do you mean, Pastor? Even though there were many doctrines being taught, amen, all around them, just like there are many doctrines that are being taught even around us today. Uh, the Bible says they remain, amen, focused on the doctrine of Christ as revealed by the apostles. Uh, the Jews had a doctrine based on the Old Testament tradition, uh, amen, uh, but they remained focused, amen, on Christ, amen. The Romans had a doctrine that saw Caesar as being uh, a god, uh, amen, but uh, the early saints, the early church, they remained focused, come on somebody, on Christ. Oh, come on, somebody. The Greeks had many gods and even, amen, statues to unknown gods. Amen. But the early church, uh, they remained uh, focused on the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Uh, they were steadfast in fixed truth. Amen. Amen. They did not belong to the shifted generation of men. Amen. Who the songwriter wrote. Amen. The songwriter wrote this song. Amen. They were consistent to the words of the songwriter who wrote, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweet frame, but wholly lean 
of Jesus' name. Oh Christ, this is my rock I stand. All of the ground is sick and sand. All of the ground is sick and sand. So number one, they remain steadfast in their doctrine. Uh, they didn't go to the left nor did they go to the right. Uh, but they stayed straight ahead and they didn't allow any other kinds of doctrines, amen, to commingle the teachings of the apostles. And then number two, they were regular in their fellowship. One thing that this coronavirus has done for many, and that is it has gotten them out of fellowship. Uh, there are some, amen, that haven't fellowship with us since they, amen, since the pandemic started. And there are some that have disconnected themselves with their church, amen, but, amen, but in order for us, amen, to be a focused church, amen, we must be steadfast in fellowshipping with each other. No, we can't come together physically like we like to do, amen, but we can, my brothers and my sisters, we can connect spiritually, amen, like we're connecting even now through Zoom. Amen. Not only can we connect through Zoom, but we can also connect through prayer. Amen. That if you pray for me, and I pray for you, my God, they were steadfast in fellowship with each other. The one aspect of the New Testament church that stood out over all others was their fellowship with one another. The Bible said that they associated with each other constantly. Whether it was in at their weekly communion uh, dinners called love feasts or prayer meetings, it soon became very obvious that they loved each other, and they continued doing so. They conversed with one another about the things of God, and they did not give up the conversation. So when we come together to worship, amen, they were all a part, amen, of regular worship. Amen. They do not eat together, shop together, amen, talk about life together. That is life from a Christian perspective. But to remain focused, the church today must tear a page from the church of Acts and learn to love and fellowship with others in faith. And then number three, they help those in need. The early church in the book of Acts, they were steadfast in their commitment to help one another. Amen. The early church members, they were sensitive to the needs of their brothers and their sisters. The Bible said, how dwelleth the love of God in you? If you see your brother in need and you shut up your bowels of mercies. But the, these early church Christians, they were very, amen, they were very keen on focusing on helping one another. And so the, today the church should remain focused on this aspect of ministry. We must respond to the needs of those among us who are in need and must also see the needs of those around us and respond accordingly. Helping those in need is just as important today as it was in the beginning during the early church. And the fourth and final thing is that they were steadfast in prayer. The church in Acts, the second chapter, remain steadfast in prayer. God cannot bless a church which does not pray. And the churches must increase in supplication. What do you mean supplication? We must earnestly and humbly pray one for the other. The church that prays maintains a connection with God. It is a church that speaks to God about the needs of the people but also hears from God in response to the needs of the people. Amen. No matter how busy the world becomes, it should never get so busy that it cannot pray because prayer changes things. For the word said that my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear them from heaven? I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. 
Stay focused, my brothers and my sisters. We must stay focused also on praising God. And finally, brothers and sisters, we must never lose sight of the importance of praising God for all that he has done for us. We praise God because he is good and his mercy endured to all generations. The church, yes, we're in pandemic. Yes, we're in pandemonium. But the church should never lose focus on the importance of showing gratitude to God for blessings shown unto us. Come on, somebody. We praise God because he blessed us by showing us his love. It was a love that was higher than the heavens. It was a love that was deeper than the oceans. It was a love that's lovelier than the sunset. It's a love that's sweeter than the honeycomb. It's a love that's fresher than the morning. It was a love that could not be measured, for it is immeasurable. It is a love that's described, for it is indescribable. It is a love that's evaluated, for it is invaluable. It is a love that could not be understood, for it is incomprehensible. It was a love that could not be explained, because it was unexplainable. There is no other love that can bless and benefit us, penetrate and saturate us, glorify and magnify him, satisfy and beautify him. We should give praise and show love for God, for he is, he is our way. No wonder the songwriter said, he said this was the dash. He said, oh, Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first, he first loved me. I said I wasn't going to tell anybody, have I got a witness out there, but I could not keep it to myself. I got to tell that we serve a We serve a God that would take lost hope and turn it into fulfilled dreams. Who will tell the story? Who will tell the story of the goodness of the Lord? Yeah, face the unfaceable.
when they try to talk them talk. If you're going to tell a story, you must know Jesus for yourself. You can't know of them. You can't know about them. But you got to know them for yourself. You can't tell your story. Yes, until you can tell your story. Tell them about Jesus. Stay focused. The four focal, focal points. Number one, we must remain steadfast in the doctrines of the apostles. Number two, we must stay regular in our fellowship. Zoom, coronavirus, COVID-19 is no license for anyone to get out of fellowship. This is our mode of fellowship, of worshiping. Don't pick flowers by the wayside. You know who you are. You know who you are. Get back in fellowship. You got to stay. You got to stay by the fire now. Because if you, if, you get, if you get away from the fire, come on, somebody, you're going to cool off. You, you got to stay within the pack. Stay within the pack. You got to stay within the pack. Number three, they help those in need. And this is a time more than anything that we need to help somebody. And as a songwriter said, Minister Poot, if I can help somebody. Mm -mm -mm. As I travel along this way, then my living shall not be in vain. We got to help somebody. We got to stay focused. We're not going to let the corona the coronavirus well pastor they're saying by by by, by the by the end of the year there's going to be over 200,000 people that would have would have died from the coronavirus. Listen you all, that can't be our focus. The devil is a lie. 
He's trying to distract us. What are you saying, Pastor? Don't wear your mask. No, I didn't say that. Don't put that on Facebook. Because that will be a lie. You practice social distancing. Practice wearing your mask. Practice social distancing. Do wash your hands. But don't be 24-7 looking at CNN and looking on the internet how many people died. Because the more you look at that, you know what that's going to do to you? That's going to that's gonna cause you to lose what? Focus. You're going to lose your focal point. You're going to lose your central. Come on, somebody. You're going to lose. You remember the earlier definition I gave? Focus the center of interest or activity. Central point. We must stay focused. Again, number one, remain steadfast in the doctrine. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Be not tossed to and fro. Don't. You know who change? Hello, somebody. We change. We change when we lose our focus. But we can't change. The word don't doesn't change for anyone. The word. He said, what I say to one, I say to them all. What he said to you, that same word applies to me. No one has, no one can make any excuses. Let's stop making excuses. Well, 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 I haven't seen this person since we've been, no, listen, listen, you stay focused. Every mother, mother, mother Richardson used to say, must work out his own soul salvation. I want to see everybody connected to us. Get the word out. Help me get the word out. Our deacon, Deacon Dassler, Deacon Dassler, our spiritual, amen, our chairman of our deacon board. Please get the word. Have all the deacons to call all their members. We want everybody to be on the air to connect. We want to regain focus. We want to regain our central point. We want to regain focus. Let's encourage them to come out, to connect. Do all that we can to connect those persons and get those persons that have been out of fellowship with us. Out of focus. Out of fellowship. Back in fellowship. Number three, they helped those people in number four. They were steadfast in prayer. And more than anything, my brothers and my sisters, if there ever was a time that we need to pray, that time is now. Pray for me. And I must pray for you. We must pray for one another. We must pray one for the other because if we ever needed to pray and we ever needed one another's prayers that time is now so no matter how busy the world becomes and, and no matter how focused and i know i know where i know there is an election there is an election well pastor can i just pray no you can't no you got to do more than pray We are faced with the most important election in the history, in my opinion, of these United States of America. And it requires you, yes, the church, the church being focused also means participating in the voting system. We are citizens not only of heaven, but we're also citizens down here on earth. We have earthly citizenship and earthly and citizenship responsibility. And if you neglect and fail to pray, fail to vote, then you will be shortened or you will be not carrying out your citizenship responsibility as a citizen. Please get out and vote. Encourage others to get out and vote as we prepare for 
the upcoming election in November. And if we ever needed to pray, that time is now. And so as we do the four things that we just covered, we must, we must climax all of those things and incorporate within those four things the focus of praising our God. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, taste and see <laughs> that the Lord is good and that his mercy endureth forever. A focused church. They were focused. Let us be focused, stay focused, and give him glory and give him praise because he is due all of the above plus more. Well, God bless you. That's all I have for you. Amen. I hope you got something out of the message. Amen. A focused church. Amen. Let us be focused. Let us stay focused. Amen. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. For he is our light and our salvation. Of whom shall we fear? The Lord is the strength of our life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, Sister Williams, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. When a host is camped against me, my heart shall not fear. Here it is. Here, now, here's focus. Here it is, y'all. Here's focus. The Holy Spirit just dropped the description in my, in my spirit. Psalm 27. I don't know the exact number. I believe it's four or five, but here it is. Here's the scripture. Here it is. Here, here, what, what do you mean, Pastor? Here is the focal point scripture. Psalms 27, and here it is. One thing. Come on, can you put one finger up for me, everybody? Come on, can I see your finger? Let me see your finger, please. One finger. Can you help me out? One finger. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek out. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it real. I'm going to read it right here to you real quick. It says, it, it, yeah, I, did, I was right. Psalms 27 and 4. Here it is. One thing. Now that's focus. That's been focus. Have I desired of the Lord? That will I seek after. That I may dwell. That's it. That's it. That I may dwell. Notice now all of the eyes. The eyes. Here, the eyes here, uh, the eyes here, Sister King, make this personal. One thing have I, I, that's I number one, desired of the Lord that will I, I number two, seek after, that I, that's number three, may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire. Come on, somebody. When you come in the house of God, don't come up in here like you're in a funeral. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't come up in here like you got lemons in your mouth. No. Come, come. Look, enter into his courts with what? Thanksgiving. Come on. Amen. Come with thanksgiving. Come with praise because he's worthy of all our praise. You know what? I'm focused. I don't know about you. When you look at a neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm focused. My God, I'm focused. Amen. And thank you, Pastor, for helping us, amen, to refocus ourselves and know that it's not about us, but it's about the kingdom. Amen. And it's about advancing the kingdom of God. Amen. And we're just so thankful for all of you. Thank you for just being so connected to us. And please, uh, Deacon, Deacon uh, Dassler, I believe you may have heard me say earlier, please coordinate with our deacons.
and let's make sure have all of them reach out uh, to those assigned families and let's uh, let's check on them and also at the same time let's ask that they connect uh, on our services uh, and do all that we can to assist them if we need assistance from our technician team let them know uh, they, they, they will even go to your house, come to their house, and do what needs to be done. Isn't that right, Sister Evelyn Williams? Sure Amen. There. Sister Evelyn Williams, that's the kind of technician we got. Amen. Amen. She's on top of it. She's on top of it. All right. Well, listen, God bless all of you. Thank you so very much. First Lady, can you come up? And, uh, and uh, we want you to greet the people as we prepare to, amen, dismiss. And, uh, all right, honey, say something to the people. Here, here, here's my honey bunch, y'all. Here's my honey bunch. Good afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for the message. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school lesson and the message. I thank the Lord, stay focused. And that's the most important thing that we need to do is to stay focused. Stay focused in the Lord so that he can continue to bless us and give him a life. That's the most important thing, giving God a life. Because he's soon to come. We don't know when he's coming, but a time is showing that he's soon to come. When I go to the marketplace, they tell me they can't take change. Yeah. They can't take any change. They don't have any change. They're setting it up more and more for the Antichrist. That's so right. Jesus is soon to come because if you, they start going back now more to plastic, more electronic. So we need to know Jesus is soon to come. Everything is in motion. We just, after while we'll be praying, come Lord Jesus. I love you and I thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Thank you for the word of God. Let's continue to live holy because Jesus is soon to come. Thank you. Please, ma'am, please, sir, invite a neighbor, invite a friend, amen, to be a part uh, of our services, amen, and the Lord will bless you just the same. This is what you have, this is, look at this, and this is what we all have to look forward to, amen, in, in the near future, uh, our returning back, and of course, also, we're looking at a drive-in, we're looking at drive-in, and we'll talk more to you about that. That will probably be the first phase before the return, uh, but we'll talk more about that uh, to you later. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you again for all things, and to our technicians, to Sister Dr. Moore Lawrence, and, and to uh, uh, to Dr. Evelina Williams, and to Demetrius, and to all of you. Thank you so very much again for everything and for making our service come to fruition today. And Minister Coleman, Minister Coleman for our scripture. God bless you. We love all of you with the love of the Lord, and it's nothing you can, you can do about it. God bless you. At this time, we're going to have the uh, closing song, and uh, the closing song is coming. <laughs> Wait.